Which one of these single barrels is the best? Let's find out. Welcome to Average Joe's Whiskey. My name is Joe and today we have a very exciting video. I kind of wanted to compare two of the most hyped, popular Buffalo Trace single barrels on the market, Blanton's and Elmer T. Lee. Both of these are obviously super hyped. They get a lot of attention. Everybody's hunting for these bottles. This is like a $65, $70 bottle and this is like a $40 bottle. However, Blanton's tends to sell for $100, $150 on the secondary market. Elmer T. Lee somehow gets even more hype. This $40 bottle, you will regularly see marked up to like $200, sometimes $250, even $300. That is crazy. That is crazy. I don't even know what else to say. However, I still think it is an excellent bottle if you can find it at a reasonable price. Reasonable price being, I don't know, maybe under 100. Personally, I will buy either one of these if I see them for $100 or less. I was lucky enough to get both of these at the Virginia ABC, so I paid retail for both of these, but I thought it would be a fun comparison, so that's what we're gonna do. And just for fun, I figured I would throw John J. Bowman into the mix. So John J. Bowman is a Virginia bourbon. However, it is distilled in Kentucky at the Buffalo Trace Distillery and then shipped to Virginia where they redistill it in a copper pot still and then they age it in the great state of Virginia right down the road from yours truly. So this one comes in at 100 proof, a little bit higher than the Elmer, which is 90 and the Blanton's, which is 93. And the other advantage that this one has, it is about 10 years old. So 10 year old single barrel sells for about $55 retail. The one benefit of living in Virginia is that this bottle used to be easy to find. Not every store would have it, but if you went to like two or three stores, you were almost guaranteed to find one. And as of like last week, this is now on the allocation list unfortunately. Theoretically, I could still drive down to the distillery and get it. However, on their website, it's been listed as out of stock for like ever. So I don't know. This might be the last bottle of John J. Bowman that I'm going to be able to find for a while. So I might as well see if it's better than the Blanton's or the Elmer T. Lee. And then I can decide if I want to hunt it or not. All right. Well, without further ado, let's get these bottles out of the way and let's taste. All right. That's, that should be good. All right, so all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna nose them, I'm gonna taste them, and I'm gonna tell you which one is my favorite and which one sucked. Just kidding, these are all gonna be good. They're all gonna be really good. They're all gonna be pretty good, I think. They're all gonna be pretty good. I'll stick with that. All right. This one's got a nice nose. It's got some oak, some nice sweet oak. I like that. It's a little bit muted. There's definitely some cherry, like a slight cherry cola note maybe. A little bit of citrus. Maybe some toasted, like a toasted marshmallow. All right, glass two. Hmm. So not as much oak on glass two. Glass two is a little more vanilla. Still got some cherry notes. I expect the nose on these to be somewhat similar since two of them are Buffalo Trace mash bill number two and the John J. Bowman is pretty close to Buffalo Trace mash bill number two. So there are rumors that the John J. Bowman is Buffalo Trace mash bill two, which is their high rye mash bill. According to the master distiller at Bowman, actually I think the former master distiller now, uh, Brian Pruitt was his name. He did an interview a while back. I think he said that the John J. Bowman is a proprietary mash bill. So it's contract distilled at Buffalo Trace for Bowman Brothers. All right, so anyway, what I was trying to say is two of these are Buffalo Trace mash bill number two, and one of them is gonna be very similar to Buffalo Trace mash bill number two. All right, back to glass two here. So uh, it's very vanilla, very vanilla with a little bit of cinnamon. Interesting. Glass three. Oof. I think glass three wins on the nose. 
Yeah, this one's just leaping out of the glass. A lot of really nice oak, a lot of vanilla, and like a bright cherry. Man. Yeah, I really like the nose on glass three. All right, back to glass one. Glass one has a little bit of a different nose than the other two. Let's see what it tastes like. It was a little disappointing to be honest. I was like, I felt like a pitcher with like a ridiculously crazy wind up and then he goes to throw the ball and it lands like two feet in front of the plate. That was a bad analogy or it was a great analogy. I don't know. Let's try this again. The nose carries over to the palate it's just that the palate is also a little bit muted. I'm getting the same notes that I got on the nose, like the cherry, the spice, the citrus, just a little bit muted. The flavors aren't super sharp. All right, glass two. So the nose on glass two is waking up a little bit. Still very vanilla, but uh, it's leaping out of the glass a little bit more. Yeah, mostly vanilla, a little bit of cherry. Let's try it. Nothing wrong with class two. The nose carries over to the palate really well. That vanilla just smacks you in the face. Let's try it again. Yeah, you just get like a touch of cinnamon on the finish. I will say it's got a really nice mouthfeel. Drinks a little bit thicker than glass number one did. I have to say I like glass two a little bit better than glass one so far. Glass three. Yeah, glass three still has the best nose. I mean, not only is the nose like exploding out of the glass, but it's got more complexity than the others so far. And it's got the most oak, which I'm a big fan of personally. All right, let's try it. That was awesome. Yep. I think glass three might be our winner here. Let's do that again. Yeah, so glass three also has a really nice mouthfeel. It's also got that vanilla up front, but it quickly gives way into like a little bit of spice, a little bit of cherry, and then you get this sweet oak on the finish, which just lingers. Like it's still lingering. Glass three is awesome. All right, let's go back to one and two, figure out which one we like better between these two. All right, so glass one, has some darker fruit notes, if I really look for them, like some plum, maybe some darker cherry. All right, so glass one is opening up a little bit now. That last sip was a little bit better. It's got a good mouthfeel and it had a nice finish. Finish is still hanging around. The flavors just aren't quite as sharp as the other two. All right. Back to number two. I have to say glass two, I can't find anything wrong with it, but this is like a one trick pony. This is just a vanilla bomb. There's really not much else going on here. Even though glass one was muted, I am actually tempted to rank it ahead of glass number two. Let me go back to number one here. Yeah. Glass three smells so good. All right, that's it. I got my order. So listen, glass one and glass two are very close. Glass one is a little bit muted, but 
it's got more complexity. Glass 2 has virtually no complexity, but it doesn't have any flaws. All the flavors are bright. There's just not a whole lot going on. So I feel like a lot of people are gonna like Glass 2 more than Glass 1, but I'm gonna rate Glass 1 ahead of Glass 2 in this case. And then Glass 3 was our clear winner. All right, guys, are you ready to find out the order? Let's friggin' do it, man. Let's do it. All right. So in third place, glass number two, we have, all right, if I had to guess, I'm pretty sure this is the Blantons, guys. It's the Blantons. Third place, we have Blantons. And yeah, I mean, what can I say? Blantons is just a very vanilla bourbon. A lot of people love it because it doesn't have any flaws. There are no off notes, but there's also not a lot of complexity. There's not a lot of age. It's just a simple, sweet, delicious bourbon, which is why so many people love it. So good for Blantons. Coming in third place. All right, second place, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the John Jay. No, are you kidding me? Wow. In second place, the Elmer T. Lee. Really? Wow, that threw me off. That means first place is John J. Bowman. Jesus, dude. Ugh. That wasn't supposed to happen. I mean, I figured the age and the proof point would give it an advantage, but honestly, I was still pretty sure the Elmer T. Lee would kick its ass. And it didn't. Wow. Here, I gotta pour a little more of this. Why was the Elmer coming off so muted here? This bottle has been open a lot longer than this Elmer T. Lee. So it's had a lot of time to open up. And I gotta say, this bottle's really opened up beautifully. This John Jay is, it's good. I just remember, I remember the Elmer having a little more oak. Even though I know it's not terribly old. These are like seven years old or so, I believe. But man, the oak on this thing was just beautiful on the nose. And beautiful on the palate. All right, guys, clearly I'm an idiot and nobody should ever listen to me. What can I say? The 10 proof points and the 10 years in the barrel really helped out the John Jay Bowman here. The Elmer just came off a little muted. The Blantons, like I said, is just a vanilla bomb. But man, did not expect that. That's why blinds are so much fun, right? Right, all right. Clearly, I don't know anything about anything, but if you wanna do me a huge favor, hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed, please do that too. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.